everybody. Welcome back to Root Reactions. I'm S.A. Baz Collins here once again with my incredible co-host. Hi, this is Albert Nathalit. So, up to the trial now. Oh, my God, no. I've been dreading this for so long. Yeah. Although I think it's interesting that we are actually doing a trial, whereas like in the movie, it was just like, they kidnapped them and then the fates yeah. were decided. You know what I mean? Yep. So yeah, yeah, yeah. in this way, we get kind of a, I guess, they'll have the ability to respond. I, I, I'm, I don't know. You know, I, it could all yeah. be one sided because they're vampires, you know. So, I mean, any kind of due diligence could go right out the window you know? right 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 uh but they're doing it in daytime too so the vamps i think if i remember right their their power is greatly diminished during daylight so they can't oh. pull a lot of it so they're not gonna be able to do anything although it's weird they made that big comment about all these weird crimes going on and right. I'm wondering if any of that is going to play into this. Oh, I, I just thought that comment was just random stuff the new Covenant under Santiago was doing because they stole film and stuff. Maybe it's yeah, it was weird, but it was weird trial. random shit. You know what I mean? Like chanting on the Eiffel Tower. Maybe I thought it was just them bonding under a new leader or something. I don't know. Yeah, but why still? There was also a lens that was stolen and you know, it's just weird stuff. But I guess, I mean, they oh. do do those projection things. So maybe it's something along those lines. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, I hope they don't do something creepy and horrible for the for the um, inevitable conclusion of the trial. Oh um, my God. Okay. So you're ready for this one? You're all no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, season two, episode seven. I could not prevent it. Oh, no. It's no. ominous in and of itself. No. Okay, here we go. Stay tuned. I have to say, like, the fact that they're not shying away from the gayness of it all, like the relationships, it makes it so much more poignant. Mm. And at least for me, it's cool to see that, you know, even though the relationships are toxic. Yeah. It's yeah. fascinating the way, yeah. because... They are supernatural beings, but many of the things they live through are human things that right. we sometimes go through in our relationships. So yeah. I don't know. I just appreciate that. I was being hunted and I was completely... Hi, Lestat. Come to me. A thousand nights of sulking and the first sight of her? You are just going to up and leave me? I am trying to restrain myself! Last dance. I think it's interesting they showed Claudia, but they're not showing her. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's from the backside. Right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's true because. You want a companion? Because Delaney's doing it. Up the oopsie, yes. Uh -huh. Trampled on the laws, and I am to reward her for it. He broke with the covet. They gave him a choice. He chose. See? That was such an open ended line. I kind of thought that's going to be Right, right. Antoinette Brown and the vampire Lestat de Lioncourt. You know what this gives me vibes of? And I don't know, you're not probably not going to know what I'm referring to. But back in the day, Dynasty, which was a soap, you know, an evening time soap opera that had um, a queer character in it. And it was very big for the 80s. It was a very avant-garde kind of thing to do. There was a sequence where there was a trial and Joan Collins played this femme fatale that walks in and all you see is the door is open to the courtroom and you see her with this big stylish hat and that's all you mm. saw. This gives me that kind of vibe where <laughs> Lestat is just going to make a grand entrance and uh, shot the shit out of everybody. You know he's going to. Oh, Lestat yeah. Lestat loves to be dramatic. Okay. <laughs> Session 15, Louis de Pont de Lac. That is so morbid. Why would they Bueller, keep that? Start? Bueller, <laughs> anyone? <laughs> um... Overwhelmed, <laughs> outnumbered. <laughs> Armand sold you I'm out. I'm talking now. Sorry. Whoa. Go ahead. I mean, yeah, this is. I'm Cly, trying to bite anything that moved outside the sack, straining for any sound of her, any sign she was alive. <laughs> Ooh, they're putting her in the rat box. Yeah. I heard when the rats found her. Oh. I could not help her. And finally, the premium. Oh, God. 
the vampiress Antoinette Brown and the vampire. Oh, yeah, because they did kill Antoinette, too. <laughs> they burned her. In and out of consciousness. <laughs> A play that's been fully designed and rehearsed. And every actor on stage. Oh, my God. Except for us. For real? That is so sick. And not in a good way. To speak our unwritten parts. We didn't know any laws. The cover members sitting behind us would use their collective powers to disorient our minds, our hearing, a vice handle turning, jaws compressing the skull. They were both trying to kill us! Really? I didn't know vampires could like gang up on people like that with my well, powers. Well, if you think about it, they all applied their power in one direction. Sure. Again, it would speak to why they have covens in the first place. Your angel. Right. Members, you, know. you go on planning, quote, our future together, end quote. Not much time left, Lestat. Pass it around. She had us all fooled. Accuse must stay silent and must stay seated. They prove. Whoa. They slashed to the bone. Slashed oh, in all of their Achilles oh. tendons. Before the curtain fell. Set dressing. Nail. I mean, they would heal, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later. I know, but. Claudia. Maybe someone can fly? Growing no, sense of nausea no flying. took over me. I could feel a presence in the theater. Oh. A familiar scent. Oh my God. The audience was leering and feral. We were on trial for murder. And all I could think was, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, he's coming. The oh my god. Monsieur Lestat de Lioncourt. Oh, the diva oh, herself. To thunder With the dream applause. Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Giving he's me diva even... status. He's look Oh my god, he's not even looking at them. Oh. A very special book for you to swear upon, Monsieur de Lioncourt. Written by the vampire Claudia, in which your last words are recorded in your own blood. I swear, in my own blood. Monsieur de Lioncourt, you've returned to Paris. Whoa. I have a box at Roland Garros for the men's He double. still hasn't looked at them. And a crook, madame, at brasserie <laughs> You can't control us, that's sorry. No. He's not going to follow the script. Murder of my being. It's their turn to hurt. He was back. In the flesh. It had all the hallmarks of a hallucination. Lestat. At last, come to kill us. But no, he was real. So your new boyfriend sold you out to your old boyfriend. Okay, all right, I sold him out. And then he put you on a show trial yes. in front of a live human audience. That's right. <laughs> Let me guess, the star witness's testimony was scrupulously impartial. Take us back to the beginning, <laughs> if you will, of this story of butchery. It's a story of love. Is Lestat really not going to look at them? What? It's a story of love wrong. Come on. To watch. Really? A painfully close view of the stage. Or what? Hmm. Or they'd kill me. It was a part of his punishment. Just how? For the readers, uh, to save your own life, Armand, you screwed over Louis, Claudia, and Madeline, and then you sat in the best seat in the house watching the consequences of you screwing them over. He had a lot to account for. 
But he spent the whole performance calculating a way to save me. An unfathomable sense. Mm, what? That makes no sense. I buried myself in the dirt, Porte Neuilly, in the outskirts of Paris, and I lay there for a hundred years. Napoleon marched his drinks cabinet across Europe while I mourned. <laughs> the only sounds I heard were the weed roots growing around me. My only sustenance, the ancient blood already inside me. You awoke in 1908. But even a century underground could not obliterate the pain of Nicolas's death. I did what many have done when too many ghosts haunt the old world. You left for the new one. Bobbed the Atlantic in search of America's star-spangled shores. <laughs> I disembarked for New Orleans. Who did you meet there, Monsieur de Lioncourt? Finally. Wow. Oh my God. Louis de Pointelard. Let the court record show that the victim. That look. Whoa. That was incredible. You be precise in your declarations, advocate. I first saw Louis in a street brawl. The accused was a troubled man, a failed sugar farmer, a brothel keeper, forced into corners by his race, alienated from his own desires. American puritanism mangling his very soul. Well, that part is true. Cold that part is yep. definitely true. <laughs> Louis first accosted me in a pleasure house, and then everywhere I went, as if <laughs> by happy accident, there was Louis, offering to be my chaperone, his eyes sliding down me. I, a vampire was being hunted with every breath, every heartbeat, every sidelong glance. Louis was saying, come to me. Come to me? Those are his words. <gasps> he kept coming out after me. Come to me. Fuck you. Appetite. <laughs> well. Shoot. <laughs> Me. How do you know that it was not your own voice, Louis? Speaking your own unspeakable desires. Screaming them in the darkness. In the hopes that I would come to you. I destroyed that priest and another right in front of him. Yes. You put your fist through his skull, showed him what enormous power you possessed. I offered Louis myself instead. What I am. Interesting how he remembers it. My mm. companionship. And again, this is why I write the stuff I write. Perception. It's all about mm. perceptions and, and how they it. don't meet up. Yeah. You know? On the altar. And with the two dead priests in his purview, the accused raised up his hands and took your face in them with a kiss of acceptance. Yes. Max! <laughs> Did you say something? Ooh. Oh. oh, yeah, oh. exactly. No, that, this is not the time to do that. It disgusts you. Every day in the world is loving that Lestat's going to speak for us. <laughs> what you didn't do, Corporal Donny Chaffin, is fire your M1 Garand rifle a single time. Germans overran your line, and three days later, you ran off into the Belgian forest, during which time your friend, who you share a matching tattoo with Private Ernest Hughes' arm was shot off. You tried to desert, but you couldn't read your map, and eventually you stumbled back to your line and claimed you'd been lost in the fog. There are 14 men who served their countries honorably in attendance with us this afternoon. They may, like yourself, be disgusted by the transcendent love between two vampires of the same sex, but I wonder. 
Where lies their disgust now? Continue. Whoa. Um, <clears throat> Louis didn't take the bump. Oh, wow. Louis. That, was, was, that was very good. <laughs> the accused didn't take to vampirism. Louis was fixated on the loss of his humanity. Mm -hmm. His estranged family. Yep. The internecine oh, politics of his food. Take my hand. This. Whoa. Can he really do that? Vampire loneliness. Whoa. You call up and die, don't you? I know. I know. Well, I mean, he did demonstrate it before. When, uh, infrequent kills up turns. when all those soldiers were in the, their house, oh, he was able to talk to all of them, you know? So I would assume he can pass a feeling along that lane. Right. I didn't know if he was ever going to come back. Good luck on how that fucker didn't ask. Gave me no say. Made me more of a vampire than anyone up here. A child. 14 years old. Recalling a transformation death. weeks Good after the event. Oh. To soothe a relentless question. Whoa. I told Louis. 14 forever. Should be a cripple. Lestat stood on that stage. Took wow. all the familiar pieces of Louis's life, defiled them, bent them into a Lestat shaped effigy. But some. But did he? Some of it. Now. What? I remember being out of my body at the time. I was in Paris, but also in New Orleans. Lestat hmm. took me there. 14 forever. She'd be a cripple. She's going Weird. What do we do? Nothing. We do nothing. She's dying because of me. They lit her building on fire because of me. They lit whatever fire you're talking about with their own free will. You do not know this girl. Make her like us. Please, I can't have a die. The gift cannot be given to children. What do you mean? Yes, it can. The great laws forbid it. Great laws? She's going to die in front of us. But he was in a terrible panic. It's Guilt not the way we saw it originally. Yeah, no. But again, that was Louis telling the story. Right. And she'll be what? A lap dog. No, no, not a doll. <laughs> a daughter. Yeah. I'll stay. I'll stay. I'll never leave you. Ever again. What? I'll be happy. For you. There was a light in his eyes. Please. Oh my god. A light I'd not seen for years. But I resisted. Because I knew the wisdom of the great laws. Because I knew pain and anxiety would be her only birthright. Fuck you, him. To what's up? She will be at war with herself. She's of an age. Where emotions will soar and plummet, mountains and valleys every day of her life. I don't care. Well, you must care. Her mind and her spirit will age, but the world will treat her as she is now. And she will be miserable. And you will yeah. never. You're not doing it right, really. Yeah. And you have to drain her, Presley. She asked if I was an angel. Me. Mm. Wow. It's not how it happened. The manipulation, it's just everywhere. Is it? Now, uh, there's no way to know. It is how it happened. I didn't think it at the time. Really? Look at it. Whoa. Oh, beautiful little daughter. Please, please, please. I'll do anything. 
Please don't be anything. Please. Oh my god, really? Please, please. So even her creation was a lie. Oh. Lestat did tell, try to tell. Wow. Ah, but you, you were uh, manipulated. Uh -huh. Trial. Yeah, it's a hot light. Uh, it's not. No. Oh, Louis. Oh, no. He didn't tell me what you would be. And I played down my role in it. Yeah, because it suited him. Whoa. You should go with Lestat's version. He's admitting it. I think. I'm sorry. Claudia was an unforeseen joy. A formidable fledgling, a consummate killer, a congenial companion. We were a happy trio. Louis coddled her, and I gifted her a predator's upbringing. But lunch is served. But Claudia's defect caught up with her. Could it hold me? I had a defect. First time Lestat is with them there. Harmed herself in the sun for attention. And followed that with a killing spree. Corpses clogging the bayou. A penchant for human souvenirs. She put yours and Louis' anonymity at risk. Then she ran away. The vampirist tut in the wind for seven years. She looked at me. <laughs> and then she turned to Louis and said, Abandon the start. Come with me to Europe. No! And he was hers again. And you and Louis fought? Uh -huh. At first, we just slammed each other around our townhouse. <laughs> Seven years of compromise. Ah! I need to restrain myself, Louis! Denial. He, he held back. Whoa. Jesus, dude, this is, is this how it really happened? That's what happened behind the wall when Claudia was out in the landing. Oh. We only heard it. Yeah. This is what was going on. Stay back, Claudia! It's all good. See, because we heard that through the wall. Yeah. You're leaving with her? Hello. No, it's okay. It's okay. We're done. It's, it's over. Stay where you are, okay? You're going to leave me. <laughs> I'm going to take this hand here and wrap it around that scrawny neck of yours. Just like you did our daughter. I ain't gonna stop until your eyes pop. And now I'm gonna find him. Oh my and god. And chop your head off. Jesus. And now I'm gonna walk that head Whoa. all the way to Audubon Park. And I'm gonna feed it to the fucking lions. And I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. I'm burdened with my mind. Really? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> no. Whoa. You, you were teased until you toppled. He tried to kill him. Oh, did he? You used your cloud gift. You flew the accused high up into the air, then you let him fall. Two kilometers, approximately. Yes, I know, I know, I know. It's a lethal distance for a mortal, but for a vampire, it's a hard fall. Nothing more. Lestat has within his veins a most ancient blood, a godlike strength. Remember, 
He put his fist through a priest's skull. Did you do that to the accused? No, you did not. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I ask you to set aside your mortal biases and remember that we are monsters. And to us monsters, what's a bite between paramours? <laughs> I saw him swinging wild as he fell through the clouds. The projections went off sync. The start went off script again. How do you know it wasn't part of the show? Of course. Sam was cursing to himself beside me. Read for yourself. That was no scripting, Lestat. You cannot script. Of course that. not. <laughs> That's the so perfect way to describe it. Him, yeah. And it did hurt him. And afterwards, he was a broken thing. I know. I saw because I am the one who broke him. I couldn't force him to love me, and so I broke him. What is worse than that? Crushing what you cannot own. I hurt the one. I hurt the only one. Doing it again. Hurting you Aww. again. I thought of this often in the coffin that you left me in. And I've thought of this in the years since. I... I will always be sorry for what I did to you. If it's true... No, I'm just telling you. I was not worthy of the forgiveness you would give me. Wow. This is so painful. Continue. Um, Whoa. Oh my God. Hmm? What scene? Not the page. Did it move you? Crossed an ocean because he wanted us dead. And then something real. It moved Claudia right up on her feet. Good. Mm. Real pretty. You do oh. like an egg from an airplane. He's fine now. You apologize. All is forgiven. No, of course not. We poisoned him. A confession. He's not dead. He's standing right here in front of us. Can I cry and say that I'm sorry to you? That's all, Dad. This working for you, Lestat? Are we on trial? Yeah, look who just mm. caught up. Yeah. It's not a trial. It's a stoning. A stoning. I wonder how much sugar syrup they consume in yeah. filming. <laughs> yeah. This is hard. Yeah, no kidding. This was awful. Really, Louis? This really. For the heretical desecration of the first, third, fourth, and fifth of the great laws, what say you for the vampire Claudia? Ah, look, her. Are you not the horse a mile ahead of the cart? Madame Justice? The vampire Madeleine, what is her crime? Oh, she's just a bastard fledgling. Made without the knowledge or consent of the coven master. Which is... now me. Mm -hmm. He finally says it. By her maker. It is only fair that she be offered the same choice as any vampire. This is true and fair. In accordance with vampiric law, may she not join the coven and become one with us. Hmm. She must join or die. Madeleine Epavie Heiss! <laughs> the choice is yours. Will you renounce the accused you sit with and join our coven? I'm the vampire Madeleine Pavi. I 
And my immortal companion is Claudia. Oh. My coven is Claudia. Oh. So she ever wanted was someone to pick her. Oh my god, this is so sweet. The martyr skips her way to hell. Indeed. For the heretical desecration of the first of the great laws, what say you for the vampire Madeleine Epavier? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty! <laughs> and there being a... Exactly. That being death. What is your sentence? Death! The vampire Claudia rise. For the heretical desecration of the first, third, and fourth, and the murder of the vampire Antoinette Brown, and the attempted murder of her maker, the vampire Monsieur Le Stade de Lioncourt, what say you for the vampire Claudia? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty! And the sentence? Yeah! May I ask the court for a final request? Mm, no. Let her have it. Man in the balcony, wearing the high hat would you kindly remove it? Sir, would you grant the condemned her last request? Who's standing behind? What? Thank you. I now know all your faces. Oh. If there is an afterlife, I'm going to come back and fucking kill all of you. Wow. And if there isn't an afterlife, I'm still going to find a way. For the heretical desecration of the great laws, one, two, and four, and the murder of the vampire Antoinette Brown and the attempted murder of his maker, the vampire Monsieur Le Stade de Lioncourt, what say you for the vampire Louis de Pointe du Lac? Guilty or not guilty? <laughs> And the center. Is Armand finally doing something? Well, even if he was, how would we know if that's what really happened? See, this is the problem, is that you have false narrators in play, so... I mean, he has the power to do it. He has the power to do so much more. Yeah. It took all my strength. Oh, come on. For real? You saved Louis. Yes. But not her. Well, no, he didn't care about her. Here's the title. <gasps> punishment is not an applicable punishment. Oh. <laughs> Oh, but you mortals are bastards, aren't you? Arguably, a sentence worse than death. All right, have it your way. Really? Send him to Belgium. <laughs> Take him downstairs. Tuck him in nice and tight. No, 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 no. The vaults. I'm going to put him in the vaults when the uh, the other law breakers are. I'm going to guess that they didn't drive you to the Belgian border. (laughs) You never made it out of the building. No. I fought back. There wasn't much fight left in me. Whoa. They took me to their their crypt. 
Sure. Whoa. Filled the coffin with rocks so I couldn't move. What was that, Louis? I can't see how you. <laughs> hey. Was that Sam that was with my mom? Oh. Wasn't he supposed to be up there watching the mom? Oh, yeah. Well, maybe because it's over that, you know, that Describe he doesn't need to be there anymore. They've already all been convicted, I guess. Join the mm-hmm. damned. He came before me. And while that's going on, she's upstairs on stage. Ask him. I wasn't there. Okay. You were there. And now for your viewing pleasure. The lip of the stage. A spectacle of the arms around each other. Defiant. Scared. Oh no. Words to one another. This is so sad. Does anybody have the time? One shot tonight. One shot tonight. Oh no. dear. Way past our bedtime. Unless that really doesn't do anything. It's fake. Remember that when you leave here today. So fake, yeah. I tried to hear what Claudia was saying to Madeline, but my mind was with Louis. What must be happening to him backstage? And I despise you for it. And before Santiago pulled the blackout curtain hiding the perfectly mounted observatory lamp. Aha! There's, that's why we stole it. Sun in the sky above the theater. Follow the bouncing ball! Oh! Claudia smiled. And started singing to her executioners. Oh. Claudia gave the audience her back. And Madeline succumbed first. Oh my god, that is horrible. Oh my god, she looks like this. Whoa. And you can tell from the look on the start's face. The last thing she saw on earth was him. And they've all been told it's fake. Yeah, yeah, of course. I knew it was coming, but I was not prepared to watch it happen. It was intense. The entire episode was incredible. I mean, at least we got some revenge, I suppose, in the last episode, but... That's a good thing we know we got a season three, so... <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my God, this episode. episode Jesus. Seven, I could not prevent it. Wow. It was like watching a play. Mm-hmm. But, or a play within a play. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because you had the apartment in... Or the high-rise penthouse. And then you had what was going on back in the past. The theater is the final... Yep. I fell in and out of consciousness. Sex come off, your character's in a play. Props in a play. I could feel a presence in the theater. This is something yeah. the audience and all of us, frankly, shooting the show, had been waiting for for the whole season. Of course. <laughs> De Leon Cole. 
The start walking on stage is probably the most complex yes. moment for Louis. It's a big deal for Louis and Lestat to see each other again. It's their turn to hurt. Yes. Jacob and myself, it was a lot to do with what's their connection even when they're not looking at each other. Mm -hmm. Which they almost didn't for the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Only the apology did Lestat actually turn back. It's all over. The accused raised up his oh my God. and took your face in them with a kiss of acceptance. Lestat has now lost himself in the memory. From yep. there's this homophobic comment which snaps him out of it. Oh, yeah. It's just another element that pushes him further and further into catastrophe. I heard the one. I heard the only one. Doing it again. Hurting you mm. again. So today we have a five and a half, right. six page scene, which is the climax of the trial in which we find out whether Claudia, Madeline, and Louis are condemned to death by the Paris Coven. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I ask you to set aside your mortal biases and remember that we are... I like when they show the actual filming, because you get to see things like you saw, Good. you know... I'm aiming with a coat on, and he's just sitting there watching, standing oh. there watching it. Oh. Yeah. I see she's wearing slippers. Yeah. <laughs> so there's like all it's these true. things that are yeah. cut out of the real thing, you know. Yeah. Oh. In the beginning, it's terror, and then it's just straight anger from then on. Anger at Louis, anger at Lestat, anger at uh, Santiago. Yeah, they dragged her into this. Exactly. That's right, they're not treating her the same. Aware of what's happening. Yeah, the duplicity of it all. Claudia mm -hmm. is all too they alter still so the facts and the situation to suit their needs. It has nothing to do with she any of their needs. She never yep. gives any ground. She well, they never even really get a chance right. to speak their full case. No. Will you renounce the accused you sit with and join our coven? Oh. Madeline picks Claudia, and that is all Claudia's ever needed to hear is to be put first. So in that moment, it's acceptance of her circumstance. And my immortal companion is Claudia. My coven is Claudia. What say? Oh, I love that. Guilty or not guilty. guilty. Even till her death, she's a fighter. May I ask the court for a final request? One thing about Claudia that I really love is she will always give it her all. I now know all your faces. And you'll always... I love that it. part. Mm -hmm. That was so good. I'm going to come back and can kill all of you. For Claudia, it's a promise. Yeah. It's not a threat, it's a promise. She has mm -hmm. Lestat's blood. If they do anything, it's come back with a vengeance. But not her. I could not prevent it. Claudia's death represents Louis's last connection to this world. This is hard. This is a striking and painful episode. When Claudia yes. protects Madeline in that moment, yeah. it's out of sheer love. Louis feels deeply responsible for her. It is his biggest regret that he couldn't save her. It's the thing that's haunted everyone. The fact he couldn't protect mm -hmm. her, he couldn't keep her alive. But like a big part of Louis' acceptance of the gift and of his nature is knowing that Claudia really did embrace him. She was a brilliant mm -hmm. vampire. Here we are. Oh, that's the penultimate Whoa. episode. Oh. Oh, Next no. time oh, we're doing God. the finale. Oh wow! I there were so many things that happened. Uh, it was a brilliant episode. It was brilliant. The one thing that's bugging me is that entire thing with Armana doing anything. I know it needed to be like that, but it's like 
we are presented with this super mega powerful vampire and then suddenly oh i can't do anything i'm trapped in my box i'm like what <laughs> like, you had like telekinesis and, and if anything that should make louis question it even more like bitch what <laughs> <laughs> or maybe maybe it's that maybe it's Ar Armand is like pretending like he couldn't do anything but maybe he could because otherwise it just doesn't make sense like yeah, yeah. it's or maybe that maybe they're changing vampire powers a little like maybe there's a bunch of vampires that's stronger than one very ancient vampire or something but could be like, the numbers you know but, but it's I don't know because like I seem to remember that in the books if you're like just this uber powerful vampire then nobody can do anything to you essentially like right, the older right. you well, are the and more they, powerful and they you make are. reference to that with saying that Lestat had the blood of the ancients, which means they're right. already inferring he already has Akasha's blood. Ooh. So Ooh. that's already inferred now. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah, but, it's like yeah. It, it's like even at the point when they tried to kill him, he already had Akasha's blood. That's the inference, which means he wouldn't have died anyways. Yep. So it, he was always going to come back. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, so, but and then you have to balance with the fact that, again, Armand and Louis are false narrators. And everyone is. And I know yeah. I keep coming back to this, but it's a really big sticking point, yep. especially when you get the whole redo of how Claudia oh. was turned. Yes. And then he finally admits, no, that's the way it happened. Uh huh. I, I just wow. don't remember it right. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. 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 It, that was, that was incredible. And also the fight. Because the way Louis first tells it, he's entirely the victim. Mm -hmm. But but of then course he's going to color it that he's the victim because it's him. You know, we can we as humans and, and and with vampires it's magnified, but we can never admit to our own faults in many respects. That that's the hardest thing we ever have to come to grips with in our yeah. lives is admitting our own faults, especially if we have to verbalize them to others. So I think that in this case, Louis's faults is that he, this is the way he's lived. Even before Lestat, before all of that, he was a pimp who ran brothels. Yep. Shit was shady already. You know what I mean? He right. wasn't leading a very pious life. And, you know, mm -hmm. he was a shyster. That's what he did. So it's already in him and him becoming a vampire only amplifies that and makes him more of a shyster, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, but that was because that's how he survived. That's just how we got, got yeah. through it all. What I think happened is, is when he became a vampire, he then wanted to be good, even though his nature was to really have questionable morals. Yeah. You know, he tried to recast himself well, now that I'm this evil monster, I have to hold on to what was good. And then he romanticized what he thought was good in himself, mm -hmm. which is why he couldn't kill people, you know, which right. was all a bunch of hooey, you know, because he pulled a, he pulled a, a knife on his brother. He was going to kill him if, he, if his brother pushed him, you know. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I'm fascinated by Lestat's version of the story. It's so good yeah. because reading the first book, you're always rooting for Louis, but now you see it from Lestat's point of view. And it's Lestat isn't the victim either. He's like, oh, everyone is guilty in some way. Everyone was horrible in some way. Mm -hmm. But now you get at least the other side, especially when Lestat said, I was the one being hunted. Mm -hmm. Louis kept saying, come to me, come to me. And it was the complete opposite in Louis's recollections. So, yeah. whoa. Yeah. yeah. And you know, can, and can I say the unsung hero of this series, aside from all the other different cast and crew, the casting director who cast the show, every actor knocked it out of the park. Every yeah. actor acted the shit wow. out of this episode. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it, there was not a weak line. There was not a weak look. There was mm -hmm. not a weak inference. It, it, even like the cinematic moments where nobody was talking. Everybody was present. Nobody, yep. what they, what actors call, phoned it in. You know, they literally were present in the moment, and the mm -hmm. tension was so tight and so yeah. perfectly wrought. And I think it's because the casting director really knew what they were doing when they cast these people. You, oh. you have to give it to them. And I, we don't talk about casting directors a lot 
when mm -hmm. we talk about movies. But to be quite honest, if you don't get the cast right, it doesn't matter if you have the best script in the world or the best mm -hmm. director or the best yep. production assistant or designer. If you've got shitty actors, it's going to be a shitty film. Mm -hmm. You know, so if the casting director can put the right people together and make it, you know, happen for them, it, it, it gets you like 90% there in creating a good product. Yeah. So for me, kudos to the casting director. You know, um, I just, I think that's really a big testament to the fact that they got the right people in behind the scenes to make yeah. everything happen in front of the scenes. So. Right. Yeah, everyone was incredible. Even like random people in the audience, that guy who cried when with vampire loneliness, every yeah. single one, just yeah. like, wow. Yeah. And, 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 and the other thing is, you know, we know what's next because, you know, in, in the film, it's Louis' revenge. So that's how they're going to go out this season. I suppose. Revenge. The big bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big fire. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that a little because I kept dreading Claudia's death from the moment we started watching this because it's a horrible thing. And it's, it wasn't her fault. Like she was yeah. made mm -hmm. as a child, not a 14 year old, as a kid. So yeah, and that's this, the other this... thing people need to keep in their minds. In the book, she's five yeah <laughs> she's five and yeah. that's because stan rice and ann lost their child the the older child oh. to christopher whose name was claudia jesus christ so Anne wrote this character into the book as a way of memorializing and cathartically getting over the loss of her child and so that's why claudia is the way she is it's Whoa. like Anne trying to extrapolate on what, you know, things that she would have imagined her daughter would have tried to aspire to, the good things that she would try. Obviously, she had to write the monstrous part of it, but sure, sure, sure. there were things that that she had dreams and aspirations. Like she said, I just want to pick one thing for myself. You know, that's that's something a child would say. That's something wow. that you would want. You know what I mean? Yeah. So a lot of people oh my don't God. know that. But yeah, at, at, but, and when she wrote the book, she literally was going through major depression that they had lost a child. Yeah. And um, so Claudia is that cathartic response mm -hmm. to that loss in her life. So yeah, it's, oh, it's a pretty, pretty impressive part of the story when you know the wow. backstory to it. So yeah, Whoa. we probably wouldn't have had this entire saga if the real Claudia had. Oh lived. my God, that is so sad. Yeah, I did. I had no idea. Yeah. I mean, wow, wow. Okay, that's the way Anne worked through it was Whoa. to write this story, this yeah. whole chronicles. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, and it probably killed her again. I would think inside to have to kill Claudia off. Mm. You know what I mean? Because you'd be mm. doing it again. You know. No. So, anyways. Well, that's what we thought at this point. <laughs> what do you guys think? Comment down below. Um, be sure to check out Albert's stuff at albertnothlet.com. My stuff at essaycollins.com. And all of this can be found at ropepodcast.com. Um, you know, help us out. Keep the lights on. Uh, do buy me a coffee if you want to do a one-time donation. Any amount you see fit that would help us out greatly. If you're not able to do that, please like and subscribe and comment down below. That helps as well. Tell your friends what we're doing so that also can help. You can also join our Patreon to get the full um, episodes unedited. It's just a straightforward uh, presentation of them. And we have things up there that are exclusive to the Patreon channel that we have not released on the YouTube channel and some of them that we're not going to, they're going to stay Patreon exclusive. Ooh, so cool. there are some movies and films and TV mm -hmm. stuff up there that isn't in the YouTube channel. So another reason to go join anyways. And, and for those who have joined and those who have donated, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I cannot thank you enough. All right, everybody, that's it for this week. Please uh, keep watching those movies and TV shows with your loved ones, found family and friends. And we will catch up again with you real soon. Take care. Bye. <laughs>